Hello and welcome to the PC Gaming Vortex. My name is Sakaro, and today we're looking at DC Universe Online. This game is actually going to be going free to play in just a few days here on November 1st. So I am a big fan of this game. I've actually been playing it since beta. It is a fantastic game. I had some problems with controls at the beginning, but they've gotten that straightened out. It definitely has a good feel for the DC Universe um, when it comes to the comic books and things like Batman and Superman and, and Joker and all the great stuff that you come to expect from that world. Um, the game really has a good feel for that. You play through story arcs that are very indicative of the actual comic books and you actually play through some known story arcs alongside your, your favorite heroes or villains depending on what you choose to be. So this episode is going to cover the character creation, which I'll do on my own, and then I'll go through the tutorial level. After that, I'll be joined by Dark Relic, and we're going to play through together, uh, starting at level 1 and going through the game. Um, so we're going to start out here. This is the basic character creation. You watch a, a pretty cool intro movie before getting to here, and then the storyline actually takes you right into here. This is where you design your characters. So obviously, male or female is a pretty basic choice. This is where you choose the build of your character, so the the look, basic look of your character. A lot of the uh, character creation in this game is going to be based off of a uh, aesthetic view. It's going to be Select your looks. You do choose some power sets, but there's a lot of character creation based around your looks. Very similar to City of Heroes in that way. So you have a couple options here. Uh, you can either customize your character completely, which I will end up doing here, or you can do the Inspired Buy. I want to show you that. So the Inspired Buy allows you you to follow in the footsteps of your favorite hero. So for example, if you want to do Batman, it will tailor make your costume to look like Batman, and it will also choose your power set and your movement set based around Batman. So in this case, for example, you would be the gadget's power, you would be a hero, uh, you would have the role of control, and then you would um, use the movements of acrobatics, which is uh, running and jumping building to building, uh, zip lines, uh, gliding, things like that. Um, and then your combat attack style will be martial arts. We'll go into the difference between power and combat later on uh, in this video, but right now I just want to show you the basics of different choices with the inspired by. So Superman, Catwoman, Lex Luthor. So if this is something you're interested in, looking like a previous character, or um, really following the footsteps of your favorite character, this is the way to go. Um, some of these are really cool looking, like for example, Bane, they did a great job of capturing what someone that's trying to be like Bane would be. It's not exactly like Bane when it comes to looks, but it definitely looks like someone that would be following Bane. Um, Beast Boy looks identical to Beast Boy, I have to say. That is a fantastic representation of Beast Boy. Um, but as you go through here, you'll see that a lot of them are um, well-known heroes, um, and you can do whatever you'd like along the side of following your favorite hero or villain. Uh, but like I said, I am not going to go this route. I am actually going to go the customized route, show you the entire process. So hero or villain allows you to choose hero or villain. In this game, you're actually going to choose a a mentor, um, and you're going to go through the storyline of that mentor. Um, it no longer locks you into that one mentor like it did during the beta. Uh, when the game first started, if you chose Batman, you just did Batman storylines. But now it's a little better. Now when you choose Batman, uh, you do Batman storylines, and those are the main storylines you're going to get, but it's going to give you options to go to Metropolis and do some Superman stuff, etc. Uh, the only limit, of course, if you choose hero or villain, you are limited to heroes or villains. So in this case, your choices as a hero are Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman as your three mentors and then as a villain it's Joker, Lex Luthor, and Cersei which is the sister of Wonder Woman. Um, those are your choices there. Um, we're gonna go hero. Next thing it chooses is a personality type. This does not really affect your combat skills at all. Actually, it does not affect your combat skills at all. Um, it's more of a, a look of the character. As you'll see, the powerful style, he's just kind of standing standing all buff-like, so to say. And then the serious style, he's kind of ready for action, almost a Batman view. And then you've got Primal, down like a, like, like a, uh, like a beast-like character. Uh, flirty is uh, always hilarious when I see this. It looks like he's uh, something from an SNL sketch. And then uh, comical, obviously, someone like Joker um, would be comical. Someone like Ambush Bug. I'm going to go serious. So we're going to go there. Now here's where you choose your mentor. As you can see on the right-hand side, it's giving you kind of basic information about everything here. Um, in this specific case, um, it tells you what Batman's like, but you really don't have to choose... Um, Batman and then choose his specific style. So for example, if I wanted to choose Batman as a mentor and then make a character that basically has Superman's power set, I could do so now. They really opened that up. Um, so Batman, Superman, and then uh, Wonder Woman are the choices. 
I am actually going to be choosing Batman. Batman happens to be uh, my favorite of all time. I've been a comic book fan since I was very young, and uh, Batman is just absolutely amazing. Plus, they got the voice um, that did Batman in the animated series, and they got Mark Hamill to do the Joker, so the interaction between the two of them is just fantastic in this game. Okay, so here's your power. So basically in an MMO, normally you have you have your, your skill set along the bottom. So say you're a mage, you can cast powers based off of mage. Say you're a fighter, you're going to use powers based off of being a fighter in a normal MMO. And this one's a little different. Your combat attacks are going to be different than your abilities. Now, your abilities in this case, so for example, a fire guy could explode his body in fire, hitting everybody around him. Summon a giant meteor from the ground and beat his enemies with it or throw it as a good example. Now, He's also going to have an actual weapon, like guns, dual blades, a, a giant long sword, martial arts with his fists, etc. Um, and they're completely separated. Obviously, you use them both in tandem when you're fighting, but when it comes to power pulls, they're completely separated. You get different types of skill points, depending on which level you're at, and you'll put them in different ones, and we'll show you that later on. But for example, at one level, like at level two, you get to pick a power. So you get to pick something out of fire, for example, so you can do a cool ability with fire. And then the next level, at level three, you get to choose something else that has to do with your weapon. So for example, you might get a lunge attack that allows you to lunge towards your enemy. The cool thing about this game is by putting those two separate and then mixing them together and for combat, you've really got an action style. This game utilizes the click to attack idea. So right clicks and left clicks, depending on you, how you click them, you know, click, click, hold will do an attack. Six clicks and another hold will do an attack. It's very uh, combo based. Um, but they take that action combat and they add it in with the idea of power sets within an MMO and you still have that press 1 to use ability X, press 2 to use ability Y, and it really melds together well into a combat system that is pretty high action, I will say. It feels more it feels more involved than most MMO combat is, and, and we'll be seeing that a little later on, but it is, it is quite fun. So the different choices are fire, uh, which I am going to actually choose. There's gadgets, which I do have a character that's gadgets in, on another server, or I guess there's only one server now on, used to be on another server. I have a character that's uh, gadgets and bow, which is actually pretty fun. Uh, this is ice. Um, they got light, which is a new one. This is based off of Green Lanterns. Very cool animations on this one. Summoning giant Gatling guns from the sky and stuff. It's pretty sick. Um, you've got mental. So the powers of mind. Uh, nature, very poison ivy-ish. And then you've got sorcery. Um, as you can see on the right, you'll see that they have a role associated. So sorcery says healing. Um, nature is going to say healing. Mental is going to be control. Light's probably going to be control. It doesn't mean you can't attack. You're still going to get attack powers, and you're still going to get everything associated with everything. This is just the main concept behind that character. If you make a light character, you're really going to be leaning towards control. If you make a fire character, you're really going to be leaning towards defensive and fighting. Um, so fire it is. Now here's where you choose your movement. Um, this is pretty cool. Uh, you actually get to, to get this right away. In most superhero games I've played, this is something that you don't get to choose till later. Um, but in this specific one, you get to choose it right away. And I, I, I do have to admit, it's actually pretty awesome, um, the way they do the movement in this game. You can actually you actually get a skill tree for your movement choice. And some of these things actually end up going into combat. For example, if you choose acrobatics, which I have on my other character, um, you can use a, uh, a zip line to grab someone and bring them to you. Um, allowing you to make all the choices you've taken on your character really make a difference, which I think is awesome. So you have flight, acrobatics, which is uh, zipping from building to building, zip line, stuff like that, and then super speed, obviously like the flash. Um, I'm going to take flight for this character. If anybody watches my uh, my Let's Play tutorial series on uh, City of Heroes, this character is going to look very familiar by the time we're done. Um, okay, so these are the different weapons. So like I said, this is the point where you're actually clicking to attack. This is the action portion of this combat system. Um, now, there's a lot of choices here, and I love this. Uh, bow, um, brawling, I'll show you all the choices here. There's dual pistols, which I think looks really cool, kind of a, a Deadpool thing about it. Um, dual wield. There's a hand blast, uh, martial arts, pretty cool looking. He's got like a hand knives of some sort, which is neat. Uh, one-handed, so you have the one-handed weapon. Uh, rifle, pretty obvious on that one. And then there's staff, which is a really popular one. And then two-handed, so you get the big 
big old honking weapon. I'm actually going to go dual wield on this character. Okay, so here's where you really delve into your costume. Okay, so you've got all these here. You could go back and choose a, a, a template at this point. Um, but I'm going to go in and customize it. The first thing I'm going to do is change the colors. So you have all these options for colors. So makeup, obviously, if you want to make a character that has makeup on his face or some sort of painting on his face uh, or body, you can do that here. I'm not going to do that. Um, eyes, you get to choose the color of their eyes. Not that you're going to be able to see my eyes by the time I am done, but I am going to go for a dark green. Okay. Hair, this is where you get to choose the color of your hair since we're in the color portion. I am going to make his hair black. There we go. Skin, his skin's fine the way it is, but you have all kinds of choices. Being as DC heroes aren't just looking for the quote-unquote race of the character, so it's not just talking about the color of the skin. It's actually talking about like the pigment of the skin, as in you can have green skin, you can have purple skin. Uh, it's very much a make your hero the way you want them to be. Beast Boy is a great example. He has green skin. Uh, so however you want your hero to look, it's going to give you that option. It's even going to give you options to have uh, animal skin. Uh, leopard and cheetah and things like that later on, and I'll show you that. Okay, so here is where you choose your overall character palette when it comes to color. So my palette, once again for the City of Heroes people, is going to look very similar. Okay. There we go. And and there we go. I think that's right. We'll know when we add the hood. Okay, now you can actually customize specific pieces of gear. So say, for example, you have this palette set up, but you really want your just your gloves to be a specific color. It's going to allow you to do that, really making your character your own. Okay, so now we're going to go into gear. Oh, sorry about that. We're going to go back, and we're going to change our gear. So this is where you can change your body, uh, skin, and your hair. I'm going to change my hair. There are so many choices for hair. One of the things this game does that I thought was kind of weird is instead of giving a separate option for facial hair, they're going to have a different choice with uh, the facial hair being in there. So, for example, let's see. I love the mohawks. Those are awesome. So, see, we're going through the same stuff here, the fro, but now it has different um, beard options. So, all the options, you'll have five or six different options for each hairstyle, but each one will have a different uh, facial hair option. Not entirely sure why they didn't separate that. That might have been something they fixed later on. But uh, as of right now, the hair is linked to your facial hair. So the one I use is way down here. I just don't recall what it was called. You're not actually going to be able to see the hair. But one of the things I should point out is that when you're actually playing this game later on, you're going to gain items in the game and drops and equipment. And each one of those equipment can unlock a different look. So for example, say you, want, you get a cape off of a guy. And that cape just has some just really good uh, stats on it. So you put the cape on, that's great. But what it's also going to do is it's going to give you a new look. So a new cape to your arsenal, a new costume piece. Um, you can go in and keep the same costume you have, no problem. You can keep that costume all the way through the game if you've got it set up. But say you got this cape or this pair of boots that just looks really cool you just picked up. And you think it makes your costume look even better. You can add that right in. And I actually did that. A lot of the pieces on my current character have been modified a little bit to make it a little better look. And I think that's a fantastic aspect of the game. It really gives you that gear hunt, not only for stats, because those are important, but also for the look of your character. Um, trying to get that one cool item so you can get that neat helmet piece. Plus, of course, the stats associated. Okay, so here's the gear. So it's broken down pretty standard. You've got all kinds of different options for each slot in the body. Um, in this case, there's, there's some pretty crazy options, I'll tell you now. So I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, this is definitely something I suggest you could spend hours in here making your character. It's so fun to do this. But I already know what I am going to use here. So I'm going to go straight to that. I like to make it so you guys don't have to wait too long while I'm choosing a look on my character. There we go. So the face, once again, all kinds of different masks and sunglasses and, and all kinds of different options. I love the glowy eyes. How awesome is that? Okay. So mine is all the way down here. It's right there, the V-Domino, otherwise known as the Nightwing. So 
I'm not going to put an emblem on me, but you can put an emblem on your chest, you know, like the Superman-ass things like that. Any emblem you want. Okay, so now we're going to go into the chest piece. This is obviously a very large piece of a costume, so I would look closely through all the different options you have. This is the one I use right here. Back piece. Unlike City of Heroes, you have this unlocked right at the beginning. So you can give your guy a cloak or a cape. Okay, so the hands, pretty obvious. And these bands, waist, not really too big on these. Picking a belt is always challenging in these games because the belts don't really fit too well. I'm going to use that one for now. There's one I'll probably get in one of the early missions that I'll probably switch to. And there is a lot of options for pants. And some of these pants are really cool looking. You can go like full medieval knight on it. You can go just basic shorts. Um, really giving you a lot of options. But this is actually... Should be right to here, I believe. There it is. And then the feet. Right now he has no shoes on. It's going to be... Could have sworn it was... Gotta love the loafers. There it is, classic banded. Okay, all there is to it. Download successful. This will look familiar to anybody that. Oops, look at that typo. That'll look familiar to anybody that watches my City of Heroes series. And there we go. Now we're gonna jump right in here to the tutorial. <laughs> 